It's spring plant, friends. Let's get ready for it. <laughs> Bloom and grow, YouTube show. Ah, the sun is out, plant friends. I'm on day seven of quarantine in New York City, but that's besides the point. The sun is out. Spring is coming. We are nearing the end of March. We are hitting spring. The first day of spring was yesterday and it is time to get our plants ready to wake them up and get ready for spring in our households because plant friends, spring is the growing season. So our plants have been a little dormant. They've just been kind of chilling, laying low to get through the winter, to get through this pandemic that we're all going through. And now it's time to be resilient. I've got my tank top on because I'm sweating in my house. It's actually really warm. And it's five o'clock somewhere. It's almost five o'clock here. So I will be toasting you. And I hope as you guys follow this video and prep your plants with me, maybe you have a drink as well, or maybe a mocktail. So cheers. I'm having an Allagash world on a string. World on a string. It's an ale brewed with orange peel and um, aged in bourbon barrels. And it is delicious. Um, so cheers to you. Cheers to this pandemic. Cheers to us cultivating this beautiful hobby of keeping plants indoors while a lot of us have been indoors for a little bit. But most importantly, cheers to spring, which comes every year, no matter what, no matter what pandemic. So I'm so excited about my balcony garden, but I'm also so excited to see my house plants getting ready. So I've made a little list of things that I wanna do in my apartment to prep everything for spring. So I figured that I would run through the list with you and we'd like learn together and get ready for spring together. So cheers. So number one on the get ready for spring um, list is actually clean your windows. Clean your windows, plant friends. I know that we say that as we go into winter, it's important to clean your windows because it's going to, um, the light is gonna reduce, but my windows are so dirty right now, whether it's been the stuff in our apartment sticking to it, whether it's been the stuff outside. Um, New York City is a dirty place. Wherever you live, there's probably pollution. So give your windows a good clean so that you can really access all of that amazing sunlight that we're getting now that the days are longer and the sun, is higher, right, in the hemisphere, in the northern hemisphere. Um, that's number one. Number two, do a plant check. I did this earlier today as I was trying to get organized for a few videos that I'm shooting today. Walk around your apartment and check out every plant that you have. And I have 150 plants, so this took me a minute and it was glorious. Every plant that you have, you wanna stop for a minute, take a look, and like look under the hood. We've kind of like skated by with the winter. I want you to take a look at your plant. See if it's got a lot of brown leaves. See if it's gotten a little leggy, a little etioliated. Check the soil. See if the soil has gotten so compact that it's actually pulled away from the sides of the pot or if the soil is doing pretty good. See how dry the soil is. Take everything in. This is a beautiful meditative practice, but also through the winter, and if you have a lot of plants like me, some plants are gonna like probably be forgotten. Some plants are maybe gonna have had a troublesome winter. They didn't get enough light. They didn't get enough whatever of uh, whatever they needed. And it's good to check in. So I noticed there were like, six plants that I needed to repot, which I've repotted in a separate video that you guys can go check out. Um, and so I spent this morning repotting everyone and like figuring out, okay, you're going in this pot, so this pot needs to get replanted and it kind of all takes a minute. Um, after you kind of assess who's doing great, who's killing it, who's not, then kind of make a list of all of the plants that you need to give some TLC to. And then once you realize um, who the plants that you need to give some TLC, two are, you're gonna make a list of what you have to do. So in the spring, when you wanna take care of your plants, it's very common to repot your plant, which is taking the plant out and putting it in, uh, putting in fresh soil and keeping it in the same pot. You could pot up your plant. So if you've noticed that your plant is outgrowing its pot, if you see roots growing out of the bottom of the grow of the drainage holes, if you see roots spilling out of the sides, if you're noticing that your plant is kind of wilting and like not looking very happy no matter what you do, that plant is probably um, ready to be potted up. Also, if you've had a plant in its pot for one to two years, it's probably time to just check in with that plant. And I'm gonna do that with this plant in a minute to show you what to do. Um, 
So you're gonna, so if you see roots growing out of the pot, the plant looks like pretty unhappy no matter what you do, or it's been in its original pot for one to two years, that's when you're probably gonna wanna take the plant out, take a look, see if it needs fresh soil, see if it needs to be pruned, whatever. So you're gonna be dealing with the pot, you're gonna be dealing with the home, and then you're gonna be dealing with the actual plant. So you might want to trim some of the brown leaves off. It's very normal that in the winter you're gonna get some yellow, you're gonna get some brown leaves, parts of the plants are gonna die. You. It's totally cool to cut all of those off. Um, you also might want to prune plants back because when you prune, it actually instigates growth. And if you notice like on this plant that I'm gonna show you in a minute, it's gotten a little bit leggy at the bottom and way too long for me to successfully care for it. Um, where it's standing, it's sitting on a bookshelf and it gets light up to here. And then these leaves do not get any light because it's basically underneath the window. So I'm going to prune this plant back and then actually propagate the leaves and make a new plant out of them and probably give it to one of my friends if I ever can see my friends again after isolation. But no worries, right? No one's worried about it. So um, you're going to prune, you're going to trim, you're going to prune, or you might have to make some hard decisions and maybe like compost a plant. If you've had a plant, spring is a really good time. If you've had a plant in your apartment for a year and it just like hasn't been working, spring is a great time to be like, you know what? Marie Kondo, that plant, thank you so much for the time that you've given me and the joy you've given me, but it is time to put you in the compost bin or it is time to pass you off to another friend who has an apartment that's better suited for you. I feel like sometimes people get a little too connected to their plants and I'm 100% one of these people and it gets very difficult to part with them. But sometimes if you part with a plant intentionally, it actually is opening up space for you to bring in a plant that might actually be better suited for your apartment, better suited for your personality. So it's a really good time to just kind of assess your plants. I thought we had 120 plants. Billy corrected me that we had 150 plants. So... I didn't know that <laughs> until I took a minute to do a plant check. So in my plant check, I came up with this plant. This plant, <laughs> I work at a WeWork part-time and I took a trimming. WeWork has amazing plants and I took a cutting of a plant at WeWork that was maybe this big. I took this big of a cutting and this plant is now so epic. <laughs> it is so happy. I don't know if this type of lemon lime philodendron is just like a prolific grower or if it's just so happy. It, it is sitting in my southern facing window and it's growing down my little desk, uh, my little desk bookshelf and it's so happy. So I think it's super happy in its conditions. Um, but I have had the plant now for a couple of years. So I want to, um, it is in a cash po with no drainage. So it's in a nursery pot that I stick in this cash po. I water the plant in its nursery pot. I let the water drip through the bottom and then I put it back here. This is what I absolutely recommend doing. If you have pots with no drainage, I recommend putting them in a nursery pot with drainage and then slipping it in the cash po. I cannot be more intense about that. That's what is working best for me and my plants. And I've actually just made a commitment to myself to only have pots with plants in pots with drainage for this next year, for the remainder of 2020. So for phase one, um, I'm going to prune the plant. So I've got a mason jar full of water and then I have a prop, uh, propagation cone. This is by RT1 Home. They're an awesome company out of California. Um, the cone sits on top of the glass so that when you put the plants that you're propagating, it doesn't like fall out. It just makes your life a lot easy. You can not use it and just stick it in the mason jar, but I love this thing. Um, I've cut the three, I've exposed the three nodes right at the bottom of the plant. I'm going to stick that in water. Whoops. Come on, little bag. You know what? I'm actually just going to leave one leaf like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'll have a new plant that I can give to someone after that. Um, lately, what I've also been doing is taking these um, leaves that I cut off and put the, putting them in a little bud vase and putting it in my bathroom because I can't have plants in my bathroom because there's no light. So this is how I fake myself out. Um, and it's really fun. So I'm gonna put those aside and keep them. 
So that's what I've done, number one. Number two, if you have plants that have been sitting out for a while, you're gonna wanna wet a cloth or a paper towel and wipe all the leaves down. So I'm gonna do that with this plant, which has a lot of leaves next. Another option is you could take it in the shower with you and hold it under the shower and let the water trickle down so the water is gonna wash all those leaves off on its own. So if you have bigger plants, like that's what I do with my Monstera and my Citrus and anything in like an eight inch or larger pot, I will put my entire tub full of plants and then just kind of hose them off with my shower um, head and it just saves a lot of time. So I've got a paper towel. I'm gonna hold the leaf by the bottom of it and then just give it a nice wipe down. And I will do you a favor and fast forward to this part so you don't have to watch me do every single one. Okay, so everything is wiped away. It's hilarious, the gross things that I just wiped off on this plant. So it really needed it. By wiping the plants down, you're removing the dust off of the plant. And if enough dust gets on the leaf, the leaf is where all of the photosynthesis is happening. So if too much dust accumulates on that plant, the plant is not gonna be able to photosynthesize accurately. So this is a really important part. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're sticking all your plants in the shower or wiping them down because in the winter, especially with like the dry heat that a lot of our apartments blow around, the poor air circulation in the winter, all of our windows are closed, it's really important to not miss this step. So make sure you do that. So I've pruned this, I've washed it, and now I wanna look under the hood. So when I have been watering this plant, I've noticed that the soil just looks gross. Like the soil looks, it gets really compacted. It pulls away from the um, nursery pot that it's in. It's kind of a little moldy. It's just like not looking very healthy. Um, it's been in the pot for about two years. So what I'm gonna do is dump this pot out. I'm gonna um, also, Something that you need to see. You can see that the roots are growing out of the bottom of the pot. I'm not interested in putting this plant in a larger pot. Normally when the roots are growing out of the bottom of the pot, you wanna pot it up in um, a pot that's two inches larger. So this is a four inch pot, so I would wanna put it in a six inch pot. I wanna keep it in this pot because of the way that it balances on my um, bookshelf. So I'm gonna take it out of the pot and actually prune the roots back and put some fresh soil in because I just think that this plant needs some fresh soil. When a plant has been in the same soil for several years, the soil has all of these nutrients. So Espoma Organics, which is my soil provider, I love them, they're a family owned company. It's an entirely organic company. Um, all their products are organic. They're so eco-friendly. They have such a commitment to sustainability. They're just good people making really good products. Um, this potting mix, in addition to your normal compost, where's the ingredients? So soil is normally peat moss, uh, perlite, air, water, and then other things. So all of this stuff is organic. In addition to that, they put um, earthworm casings, mycotone, alfalfa meal, kelp meal, and feather meal, and all of those things have different nutrients that release into the soil that help the plants, that the plants absorb, and it makes them healthy and happy. So as your plant lives in the soil and they absorb those nutrients, the soil then gets depleted of those nutrients, which is important for you to fertilize, but every couple of years or every year or so, it's nice if you can add some new fresh soil in there to revitalize the kind of I believe the word is microbiome that is established. Oh, hey, Billy. So I'm gonna shimmy this plant out of the pot and take a look and see what's going on. Sometimes you have to kind of squeeze a little bit. There we go, yeah. So as you can see, it's gotten a little root bound. Can you see? Yeah. It's a little root bound, so I'm gonna shake up this plant. It's really not that root bound, it's really one root that has grown very long. So I am going to um, massage the roots. I just had a great instructor at the botanical garden. I just took the fundamentals of gardening and he said roots were made to be broken. So I think people get really nervous about breaking roots and like getting them, breaking a root and like breaking the plant and having it be like all messed up. No, you're fine. If you break a root, it's gonna instigate the root to grow even more, so it's good. 
So I am just gonna massage this plant see what's going on. And then there's really only a couple of stragglers. So I'm just gonna go in and prune those roots back. Really, this is just gonna make the roots grow more again. Um, this is interesting. This was a cutting I took that did not root. That has just been sitting in the soil. So I am going to, as you can see, no roots grew here. It just turned yellow, so I'm gonna try again and cut it um, and repot it with some new, with some fresh nodes. So hopefully those nodes will grow. We'll see, this is all fun experiments. Espoma has different potty mixes for everything. So they have a um, cactus mix. They have your normal potting mix, which I pop most of my plants in. And then they also sell bags of perlite. So for those of you who like to like make your own potting mixes, um, you can buy the perlite and mix it into any of their mixes to kind of customize what you like. I like doing it. I put a lot of my plants just in the potting mix um, or just in the cactus mix, but I do think it's sometimes fun to like be a little mad scientist and mix things up. So maybe I'll put a little, per I think maybe I'll add a little bit of perlite into their potting mix, but their potting mix is totally fine to not add anything to. Um, okay, so I'm gonna make like a little mound that I'm gonna repot this in. We've got, that and mix it up and this is just going to bring some the plant some new fancy um nutrients it's just going to like revitalize it a little bit and it's going to sig the plant is ready to kind of wake up and grow more so it's just going to kind of signal hey guy if you want to wake up we're here for you okay so I'm gonna take this out, pot him up. Some basic rules for potting up. Make sure you're pressing firmly into the soil so the roots are supported. Um, like I said, if you're potting up a size, you wanna stick within two inches. So you want to pot up only two inches larger. I would never take this plant and pot it up into like an eight inch pot because then there isn't enough roots to sustain for the soil to sustain so the, sto the soil will stay wet and likely root rot. Um, and you just really, I think when I was first repotting plants, I would be nervous to like press down um, because I was like, oh, I'm gonna hurt the roots. Plants are really hardy and plants need like support in their ability to like live within the soil. So it's important that you actually press down on the soil to make sure that that nice new home for the plants is ready. Um, once this is done, I'm gonna run water in my sink over this until water drips through the bottom. The water is going to settle the soil. All the nooks and crannies are gonna kind of just nur, 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 settle on in. And then I will, once it's drip dry, I will return it to its home. I will do that later. For now, I will keep talking to you because I don't need to bother you with watching water drip through the pot. All right, check. Ah. This is another good time to go around and see what plants you have that might, like I said, need some TLC. So I have a grow light in my bookshelf, which I love. And before I kind of understood exactly how the grow light worked, my bookshelf was very deep. And so I put some pilea on the bottom of the bookshelf too far from the grow light. And I've since learned how to fix that for myself. I propped plants up to get it closer to the grow light. Um, that's like grow light 101. You can listen back to all the Bloom and Grow Radio episodes on grow lights. But I have this pilea that has become extremely etioliated. If you see, uh, it's got a really long stem and like, I'm not into it. <laughs> I'm not into it, plant friends. I want my cute little pilea that stands up like this. So you can check back um, in the Bloom and Grow YouTube show. I've been experimenting with semi hydroponics and I put, I rooted a pilea in semi hydro and it was 
unbelievably successful. So what I'm gonna do is cut this pilea down and I'm gonna root it in semi-hydroponics and then I'm gonna decide whether or not I'm gonna keep it in semi-hydro like once it roots, but for now, um, that's what we're gonna do. It's very simple. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm gonna cut it here. Oh, that already feels so much better. This thing has been like climbing all over my bookshelf. It's become very unruly. So I have a net pot. You should check back if you're interested in learning how to do semi-hydro. Go watch the video in which I literally set up all my first time semi-hydro experiments. But I've already washed the hydro balls in here. So I am just gonna do this really quickly. To see it root. And then I'm gonna sit it in, uh, when you root it, you don't put any fertilizer in it. You only start fertilizing a month into rooting. That's what Kay, my guest expert, told me. So there we go. I'm gonna water, put some water in this. You want the water to be a third full, and since this is see-through, it's like the perfect way to measure. So this is how I'm going to root this new pilea, and it just looks so much more manageable this way instead of that very unruly pot that I had. So I will clean that pot out later. But this is a good time. If you've noticed your plants have stretched from the winter, you can keep it. I have some plants, some succulents that have etioliated, which is stretching towards the sun, which I leave. But if you want to deadhead them, which is cutting off the top and rooting them, that's essentially what I just did to this pilea. The spring is a great time to do it because since the sun is out, the plants are going to be able to photosynthesize and grow those new roots and be happy in their new homes. Last but not least, fertilizing. It's time to fertilize again, plant friends. As we've been dormant, as our plants have been dormant, there's been no need to do that. But now that spring is here, it's a great idea to fertilize a little bit, help those plants wake up, and also if they've been in that soil for a while, you're gonna replenish the nutrients in that soil if you're not gonna fully repot something. So I fertilize with Espoma Organics. Um, this is stupidly simple. It is stupidly easy. I love it. I was very, um, I was very intimidated by fertilizing, I think, just because it felt like sciency and like chemicals and like there were beads and things that I was mixing in and it, and they were blue and weird. And I don't know, I wasn't, I wasn't very into it. Um, Espoma has made fertilizing so easy. Uh, all you do is you have this, uh, liquid fertilizer that they have. You flip it over in flipping it over. The cap on the top is, uh, gets filled. And then, uh, actually I'll just do this. So I take a quart so it's literally as simple as flipping it, having it get filled, and then I add a dose to a quart of water, mix it up, and that's what I water my plants with. And I do this every couple of weeks, but this is the time to start fertilizing again. It's gonna help give your plants the support and the nutrients to start growing again in the growing season. Um, especially if like you've, you know, during the winter, we scale back on watering. We don't fertilize. So it's nice to just give your plants a little bit of love. So I'm going to go around and give some plants some love who I think need some. I use the indoor house plant fertilizer for almost everything. I also have the African violet fertilizer and the orchid fertilizer and the citrus fertilizer for my citrus trees. Um, so... These are some tips to get your growing season going, plant friends. I hope it helps. Comment below if you're gonna be doing any of these things. Comment below if you have tips and tricks you wanna share with me um, because I'm happy to incorporate them in future episodes if I think it's super interesting. So until next time, my plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing. Hey, plant friends. If you like this video, make sure that you subscribe below. Also, check out my podcast, Bloom and Grow Radio, with houseplant care tips and really interesting interviews with plant people all over the world. And follow me on Instagram. All of the links are in the show description below. Keep blooming and keep growing. Doom, do, 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 do,